Welcome back! In this module I want to talk about licensing. It's important to understand licensing when you're building and deploying Splunk. Splunk has a few different license types. We have the Enterprise Trial, which is basically what we've been using for this course. It downloads and installs by default with the product. It's valid for 60 days and then it converts into the free license. And the free license disables a bunch of features like alerts and clustering and is limited to only 500 megabytes per day of indexing data. And then we have a forwarder license. When we install heavy forwarders we will be applying a forwarder license to those Splunk nodes. And finally we have the granddaddy of them all, the Splunk Enterprise License. It's purchased from a Splunk sales representative and it, the daily indexing volume is based on how much you pay. So what happens if you exceed the license quota? If the daily license quota is exceeded, you get first a warning. If you get five warnings in 30 days, you get a violation. In earlier versions of Splunk, search is disabled when there's a violation. In Splunk 6.5 or later, you can still search. Either way, Splunk will never stop indexing your data because of a license violation. So what counts as a violation? What counts against your quota? The daily volume that is indexed, not stored. So what doesn't count? Duplicated data, Splunk internal logs, Splunk metadata. Those things do not count. So let's take a look at some of the licensing options in our Splunk search head. To access the licensing portion, we go to Settings, and then Licensing, and it will take us to the License Manager welcome page. Here we can set our license strategy. As you can see here, we have no alerts and no violations, and we are in the Trial License group. If we purchased a different license from a Splunk representative, we could go to Add License, and upload a Splunk license file. We can also generate a usage report to see how much data we are indexing. If we deployed Splunk in a distributed environment with a dedicated license master, we could change this machine to a license slave and it would get its license information from the license master. We can also change license groups and when we install heavy forwarders, we will be changing the license group to this forwarder license here. And as always, I thank you for joining me in this segment. I look forward to seeing you next time.